Hey there, students! I'm Chris, and I teach the only online ESL course for politics and related subjects on the internet. If you're going to university, if you're interested in any of the subjects I talk about, or if you just need an English teacher, send me an email at the address in the description, and we'll talk about how you can learn English while learning how the world works. In my last two videos, I talked about two things that we consider normal, capitalism and the state. Those two institutions are responsible for most of our biggest problems, from violence to stress to pollution. But perhaps the worst crime they're responsible for is poverty. Someone once told me poverty, being poor, is the natural state of humankind. That it's only recently that not everyone has been poor. But I don't think whoever said that knew very much about poverty. Humans used to be hunter-gatherers. Uh, in other words, we moved around looking for food rather than farming. And back then, we had plenty to eat, a place to live, a clean environment, and spare time to be with our loved ones. Those conditions don't really describe poverty. But when the state came along, it forced hunter-gatherers to stop moving and stay in one place, to farm, and to pay their rulers a tax. They had to work harder, so they had more stress and less free time. And if they didn't farm enough, they didn't eat. Also, the hunter-gatherer diet was one of variety, because variety was available around where they lived. When humans were forced to start farming, their diets became much worse, and many of them suffered from malnutrition. These were the original poor people. States turn free people into slaves. They turn people who have access to the abundance of nature into sick, malnourished, miserable people. States continued to dominate societies, and the ways they created poverty changed a bit over time. They might have separated people into classes in a lot of places, like the rulers, the free workers, and the slaves. Uh, that way, the supposedly free people in the middle had an interest in keeping the slaves down. They were subject to the propaganda of the ruling class. So they started to believe in natural orders, where some people are on the top because they're supposed to be, and some people are on the bottom because that's just how things work. Thinking like that, of course, makes it much harder to organize a revolt. But sometimes they still did revolt anyway. The world is still separated into classes today, of course. We still believe the propaganda of the ruling class. We still believe poverty is natural. We believe poverty is inevitable. We believe poor people are poor because they just don't work hard, or because they're not smart enough. That's all wrong. In fact, poor people are some of the smartest and hardest working people, because they have to be to survive. Stephen Jay Gould, a famous scientist, wrote in one of his books, I am somehow less interested in the weight and convolutions of Einstein's brain than in the near certainty that people of equal talent have lived and died in cotton fields and sweatshops. What he meant was there are plenty of brilliant people out there, but most of them will never have the chance to shine because they live in poverty and slavery. 
So I've said states or groups of people using violence create poverty, but I haven't explained how yet. There are a lot of ways. Slavery is one of them. For example, though slavery has existed throughout history, we can give one clear example that still has effects today, and that's the transatlantic slave trade. It lasted for about four centuries. It kidnapped about 30 million people from Africa and brought them to the Americas to work. They took everything from those people, not just their homes and possessions, but their identity, their culture and religion, their families. Even today, even today, millions of their descendants still live in poverty for several reasons, including racism, but also just because poverty is really hard to escape from. Today, we think of Africa as poor and dangerous, but why? Why are there so many poor people there? Why are there wars there? It's because the same people who benefited from the slave trade ran empires that went all over the world, particularly Africa, enslaving more people to work for them. These empires and the people who ran them took natural resources, made huge amounts of money, and gave the Africans nothing. And when the European empires left Africa, they left behind states that operated in basically the same ways as the colonies. So in most of Africa, rich white people are still making huge amounts of money, and millions of Africans are still working hard to avoid falling even further into poverty. Another historical example of impoverishing people, uh, making them poor, came with the Enclosure Acts in England and Wales. Land was once held in common. In other words, if I had a cow and you had a cow, we could use the same field to let them stay in all day. If you wanted to grow something, you could use part of this land, what we called the commons, for yourself. And because we called it the commons, it's commonly used by everybody we called people who worked the commons commoners, or uh, maybe peasants sometimes. Those lands might still have been owned by a lord, which is like kind of a half a king, sort of, but the lords didn't really care what the regular people did with the common land. But with the Enclosure Acts, which started about 400 years ago, the regular people were kicked off their land. The source of food and income for commoners was destroyed. They moved into towns and cities. Capitalists, as capitalism was emerging, then had a million desperate people they could get to work in their mills and factories. Workers had no choice but to accept small wages, long hours, terrible working conditions, and every order the boss gave them. And you may have noticed all this poverty is a result of violence. Slaves are kidnapped and forced to work. Peasants are forced out of the good land. Workers are forced to make money to pay rent and taxes and debts and food. And since the system is still capitalist and still violent, most of us could be made poor at any time. What if I lose my job? What if the job paid me so poorly I couldn't save any money? Maybe I could find another job, but maybe I can't find one before my money runs out. Maybe I won't be able to afford my rent. My landlord will tell me to leave, and the police will force me to, and I'll have to live on the street. How am I supposed to get another job if I can't wash and shave and keep my clothes clean and tidy? Business owners and landlords hold our lives in their hands. 
And since we need money to survive, sometimes desperate people will also turn to violence and they steal. We think of that as the real crime because that's what the law says, no stealing. But the real question is why did they turn to violence and take this big risk in the first place? It's not that one person should be on trial and be punished. It's that the people who created these conditions, the people who took everything and don't care what happens to their victims, they're the real criminals. And yet they don't get punished. They don't even get blamed. We praise them for being smart and interesting and inspiring. You want to know who inspires me? That's the people who fight back. So let's review our vocabulary for the day. We talked about hunter-gatherers. That's what all of us were before states forced us to stay put and start farming. Malnutrition. Mal is Latin for bad or not, something like that. Nutrition is uh, the, the parts of food that we need to survive. So things like vitamins and minerals. So malnutrition is when you don't get enough of that. Abundance is that there's a lot of something, having a lot of something. The abundance of nature. Propaganda usually refers to government lies, although Sometimes we might refer it to something uh, a, a corporate spokesperson might say, too. A revolt is when people rise up and fight back against their oppressors. Again, usually government. The word inevitable means something impossible to avoid. People tell us that poverty is inevitable, but who says? What if we stop the violence that causes poverty. The descendants of any person is the children, grandchildren, everybody that any of those people have given birth to. Empires, I think we learned this uh, word in the last video, but that's okay. Um, they're really just states, but states that have grown much bigger than where they say their borders are. You could say there are some empires still today, but we'll talk about that in another video. To impoverish is to make someone poor. You see pover like poverty in that word. We learned about the commons. That was back a long time ago when people held the land in common. They, they didn't own it, maybe, but they, they worked the land on their own. Those people were known as commoners, or sometimes peasants. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope you all learned something useful. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos just like it every week.